Hey, good afternoon. Uh, sorry about last night. I, uh, I've been working uh, seven twelves, and uh, I had to get in some sleep. So I'm going to reiterate the properties palette because um, I don't want to go through it really, really fast. But um, again, we need to always start these uh, narratives with the uh, arc blast warning. Calculates the arc uh, flash boundary and incident energy exposure to determine the risk category for commonly used electrical systems. So, uh, just so that you, um, you know, your firm will provide you with the uh, recommended PPE. So we're not going to get into it again, and we know that there are uh, system voltage requirements and equipment type requirements that will have to be selected, the conductor gap, and the arc duration, um, system type, voltage fault, current, energy exposure, and all those things. And you're going to have to refer to your resident electrician or electrical professional, because I'm not it. I'm not that. I just do this sometimes. All right, so properties palette. I moved it over here from the last exercise so I could show you the tabbing and the splitting of the property palette, right? Ah, ah, it's such a pain in the butt sometimes. There it is. Well, there it's split and then it's tabbed, right? So just bring it back over to where um, I prefer it. I'm a left, right, sometimes right, left um, guy here. Now, I'm not going to bitch and moan about that DMV uh, letter that my son got saying a customer was following you around and noticed that you left this in the lobby because it'll just make me really fucking angry to find the customer and left him in the fucking jaw. <laughs> so the risk level isn't that high. But if it lefted Corey behind Maris High School into the fucking weeds and almost killed him on his motorcycle, and if I find out it was a customer that did it for fucking ha-has, I want to left his fucking jaw off and then right his fucking eye socket and poke his eye out and skull fuck him. I'm sorry. That's right. This is a preschool class. In any event, I don't know. Maybe I'm just overzealous. But I saw some import driving fucking model rocket stages around yesterday. Here in the uh, contiguous United States. In any event, what do you know? All the text just disappeared. All right, so yeah, properties palette. Properties palette. Let's just uh, put this in terms that, uh, oh, that's right. The ceiling mech. Let's put this over here. All right, so the property palace is dialog box that can stay open all the time and allow you to access the properties of items in your project. This reduces, or this feature reduces the number of mouse clicks necessary to assess the properties of a model object or project component. You can dot the properties palette to the sides of the screen or at the top of the drawing area just below the options bar, or it can float. If you dot the properties palette to the same side of the screen as the properties, uh, the project browser, there are two options for how they can be displayed. they can float. If you dock the properties palette to the same side of the screen as the project browser, there are two uh, options for how they can be displayed. You can either show both split in the dock space as seen in um, figure 1.31 or have them both occupy the same dock space, right? Same dock space. 
same dock space. Um, hold that thought. I gotta see how far this wire can reach. Anyway, so um, yeah, we're talking about Reddit MVP systems, and um, as we go into the architectural module, you notice that rigid structure, and it doesn't deviate any further from that um, in this particular uh, aspect of the industry as well. It may appear on the surface to be a bit rough around the edges, but it is just as uh, stringent um, per se. Pussy. But again, you know, it requires that everything be organized into lots of different um, redundant systems so that it can report quantifiable results back to the monitoring modules. And we're going to get to all that. We're going to get to all that. We just have to uh, hold, our, hold our horses and remain patient and not go ape shit, you know, because uh, some of these scars are still fresh, right? So um, this is an educational assessment on, on both sides of the glass. Now, if you want to be standing behind Macy's uh, the, the, during toy season, arranging all those beautiful displays of then, and then you're going to have to learn how to behave, young man. And you can't fly off the handle at the coordination meetings. As much as you want to. You have to understand that. You can't just go into the fashion district specifying fabric for these projects with an attitude like that. You're going to have to mind your P's and Q's. Anyway, yeah, so yeah, MEP systems. Fabric plays a, plays a huge part. Silk screen printing and all that. All right, so we, we could sit here all day and talk about pallets. Well, we got to move on to the view control bar. Who could see what and when and why? Because I can't see shit. Well, I should say, that's all I see sometimes. The outdoor septic tank. The view control ball. And we know where that is from the last exercise, right? Down here, these little buttons. And you're going to have to go through project after project after project until this becomes second fiddle. <laughs> until it becomes second fiddle. And it will. It will, or it won't. It all depends on how much effort you're willing to put in it. To it, into it. How much effort you're willing to put into it. But again, um, rubber mats and lockout takeout procedures are, uh, are important. Because I fucking had an Indian guy fucking give me permission to walk down a fucking alleyway over here by Parkside Lane with two fucking French fucking pools that wanted to attack me. He said, I can go. I was ready to fucking kick open the dogs of him in the fucking face. Giving me permission to walk down an alley in my own town. Who the fuck's this guy? Two fucking dogs? What is this? Who the fuck's him? Who gave him fucking carte blanche to guard an alleyway with two fucking dogs? He gave the three of them a luxury of allowing me not to Fucking kick him down the alley like I can. You can go. Who the fuck are you? The fucking veterinarian police? What are you, Dr. Tudor? <laughs> fuck. Assholes. Anyway, I'm sorry. Am I jaded? <laughs> Must be the concerto. <laughs> Maybe it's an operetta. Sonnet. Energy exposure, possible energy exposure in calories per square centimeter. Flash boundary, boundary of the flash in inches. 
and risk category. Refer to the table. I hope it has fine china on it. The view control bar is often overlooked, but it contains tools that are important to the display of the contents in a drawing area. The visual styles button provides access to the graphic display options dialog box shown. In figure 1.33. Now, that just so happens to exist all over the place. All over. You can find this button everywhere. Sometimes you remember it's over here, and sometimes you remember it's over here. It comes with repetition. But if you don't get out of the office and into the field, you're going to find, you're always going to know where it is. And you're always going to know where you are. And they're going to know where you are, too. That's where you'll be, and that's where you'll stay. So anyway, this is where we talk about, you know, silhouettes a little bit, right? And these sketchy motherfuckers that are all around town. <laughs> you know, lots of sketchy people. Like that speck across the hallway. That fucking hates me. Never said two words to the bitch. But she thinks I'm fucking crazy. And she sure as shit doesn't like me. She wanted to know who I worked for the day I got here. As if it was her fucking business to let the community know my business. Fucking spick and span. Anyway, so, um... Let's just fade to black on this one. You, you understand how this works. You've been doing this for such a long time. All you experts know how to do this. I need the fucking help, not you. So that's the visual styles button. It provides access to the graphics display options dialog box. And we're gonna get into that a little more. But the dialog box has settings that control the visuals that display the view. These include model display, shadows, sketchy lines, lighting, photographic exposure, and the ability to save these settings in a view template, which um, you're going to need to, to create and then maintain or purchase them. Or you're going to have your bin manager, if you are so fortunate to have one, um, to provide them for you so that, boom, right from the uh, placement center, wherever you um, find work, whether that be zip recruit or indeed if you have a hole that you shape, if your father gets you into your firms, if, uh, you know, you're nepotized in through some, um, you know, uh, governmental or, 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 or secondary governing body, um, you know, risk enamoring uh, 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 nest egg plan so that you don't have to go through all this shit manually. <laughs> Maybe that's how you get your work. You'll have a template to save you. Um, but if you don't, you know, you'll just have to maybe create your own deflect the fucking shield. So, this could pay off your student loan. It'll keep you from being able to pay it off. Just have it bear interests. <laughs> That's one thing chapter seven doesn't get rid of, my friends. That's one thing doesn't uh, alleviate, it doesn't excuse you, it doesn't excuse it, you will pay it off to the wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald, that's for anyone that's, you know, encrypting their data, all these data breaches, you know, like the ones I keep fucking having to incur, anyway, <sighs> yeah, it's, they're creepy and they're kooky, all right, so um, some lines are sketchy. And if you're working in a 3D, 4D, 5D environment, the dialog box also has a background setting. And we'll look at it again. And sometimes it's real far away. You'll never fucking see it. You'll never fucking see it. It's so far away that it's so close. That's the thing. It's so far away and so close at the same time that you'll never fucking see it. Like that fucking dog. Up, in, uh, up on New Street last night in fucking that cokehead's fucking alleyway at Murphy and his fucking cokehead wife, Kathleen Harmer. That fucking dog just standing in the fucking alleyway looking at me. So I'm thinking to myself, what the fuck am I wearing something? Oh, this fucking dog's giving me looks. 
Take it out. Fuck him over there. Fuck whipping a rock at its fucking head. See, that'll fucking make you move out of the alleyway. Anyway, you better not want to give my kids coke. Well, I'll give it a. I could have beamed it right in the fucking head. How how hard would you have to hit a fucking uh, a pit bull in the fucking head with a fucking brick to kill it? So it stopped looking at you. Giving you that like guard dog look. Off the chain and with no fence. You know, the fucking thing should be on a leash. How long will you get in jail for fucking killing a dog? If it like, you know, for, it thinks it's fucking in charge of the show. Probably not long, right? Cruelty to animals? Five years. To protect my kids? I'll beat it with a fucking aluminum baseball bat filled with sand. And... Anyway, risk level negative six. So let's go through each of these views because lots of peering levels, lots of peering groups. I think, you know, you know, we've mastered the laboratory so well that I think that even mice can see and report back to the IRS how much money What's in your wallet? Uh, yeah. The view control bar shown in uh, figure 1.34 has options uh, for scale, level of detail, visual style, sun path, shadows, rendering, view crop, and crop uh, region visible. You will have the ability to save and lock the orientation of 3D view. Now, I had seen a 3D view yesterday. What were all those fucking cops doing down by Meadow Street? Like as if they were, uh, you know, poised to uh, perform something. In any event, I left and said, hey, I'm not going to down there and snoop around. But uh, being that I've given it about you know, 18 hours, 21 hours, uh, I am curious as to what the fuck was going on down there. There's a lot of them right down by uh, Richie's house. Richie Lipinski's house. That monster. And he's got one of those fucking dogs, too. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm not in the know. My, my family, we can't tell little Michael. <laughs> it's not little Michael. He won't be able to comprehend all this. <laughs> anyway, there's lots of them over there yesterday. I don't know what they're doing. Maybe they're having a, a bake sale. <laughs> for a raffle 50 50. all right so um when a 3d 4d 5d 6d 10 fucking d uh, view is locked you can tag items in the view you can zoom you can pan in a lock view now um but you cannot orbit the model and that sucks and you have to be in a 3d view to orbit the model and the way i have this workstation set up i'm not really ergonomically um I'll move the coffee over here. But you remember, if you're in a 3D view and we don't have anything drawn, but we could easily just open up something and, and get some uh, a 3D view of something so that we can get a better um, inclination as to our attitude. And let's just go into, uh, you know, let's go into chapter seven. Let's go into commercial with the Paul organ. Silver, nitrate, sodium. Magnesium, so yeah, the depth code's starting to dissolve in my stomach. Let's just get that going. It'll upgrade. I always do this. And then I download it again, and I butcher it, and then I delete it, and I download it again. But it takes a while to process. So just digest this for a second while I drink some of my coffee, because we're talking about Revit MEP systems, right? Not architecture. They're two different things, right? In your mind. It's, they're two different things. There are lots of different disciplines. So let's go over to here. Take a look at that. Let's take a look over to the 3D model. Over to here, let me find the button that just disappeared. Oh, that's right, remove this 
We moved this. Remember yesterday? We moved this up. Let's come over to here. All right, so here's we got an NAP model with a linked in um, commercial architectural model, but the structural isn't linked in. And if you do link it in, it's not sharing coordinates. It's not. It, the structural model is not sharing the coordinates with the architectural or the MEP model. It is not. Good luck. The structural steel contractor engineer is not sharing its coordinates. Uh, I don't know if it's acquiring them. It's not sharing them. It's, it, but it does publish them, I think. I think it publishes its coordinates when it wants to. Yeah. That's to illustrate the point. That's the hardest thing. About bonding to steel. <sighs> These exothermic and endothermic reactions, right? All right, so well, that happens in life. Up in smoke. Anyway, I only got one cancer stick left, so any of you motherfuckers that like to try to head me off the past, I'll be going out of the house soon. Running your fucking roto dials. Listen to him that way. So I'll just put in a plug now. The courtroom microphone records it. I think it starts recording at 8 30 in the morning. So, uh, lots of peering levels. Lots of sketchy lines. But you cannot orbit the model. So, but we can here in a virtual construction world, right? If we wanted to. If we uh, push down on the center wheel and we hit our uh, shift key, we can orbit the model. Right? And you can see the architectural model becomes almost as if it's a wireframe mesh. And the MEP model, which contains the elements of uh, our design, are the elements that we'll be able to manipulate and uh, design systems for. So, you can see it's just a recessed can in some instances. It's, it, it could be very simple for you, or not. It all depends. Now, again, I'll say it again, you know, if I had someone that can rattle off foot-inch fractions up and down like they were going out of style and we were together as a team in these coordination meetings, then, you know, then I can get a little more angry at these motherfuckers when they try to flex their bravado. You know, can you add? Can you add? No, I can't add it. I can, I can get angry when you try to fucking play games and, and, and throw up that bullshit screen that you're trying to hide behind because you can't coordinate effectively. But again, we may be moving to this paperless scenario. Maybe it's just uh, on the federal level. No, no more. But see, I, 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 I want to think that, that GC is going to want that uh, conduit in blue, and they're going to want to print it out, and they're going to want to put it on the fucking table, and they're going to want to have everyone come in the room, and they're going to want to watch, they're going to want to listen, and they want to hear you, motherfuckers, coordinated effectively on paper in a room and maybe in some instances yeah you can do it remotely but I'm not one of those guys that think that this is going to go 100% paperless um, there may be uh, some uh, tug you know pull uh, give and take and again this can be done with a pencil and this can be done with a vellum, with a vellum. and who who is who what gives any governing authority the right to tell uh, uh, contractor or uh, a stakeholder in a project how they coordinate a drawing right a drawing of uh, materials that they're fucking buying in the first place they're footing the bill so I'm not uh, 100% subscribing to that this is going to uh, just save every tree in the rainforest but uh, you know I'm eager to get back into the uh, into that aspect of it because uh, I'm not an architect that can rattle off uh, at least common denominators and uh, uh, footage fractions off the top of my head like some of these foremans and uh, these other designers can. But I can do other things. You know, you know I could... Uh, well, enough about me. 
So reveal constraints. There, there's the reveal constraints. Then highlight displacement sets. Um, hide analytical model. Temporary view properties. Work sharing display, which phew, one of these days. Reveal hidden elements. Temporary hide isolate. Oops, we skipped it over. Temporary hide isolate. 3D view lock. Now, the only way that you could add dimensions to a 3D view is with 3D view lock. And um, isometric dimensioning is a lot fucking easier in AutoCAD when you use the control E, the control E to change your uh, ISO plane. You can really do some really nice ISOs, which are basically just, you know, you know what I mean, three point drawings. And I, I can do some ISOs, but radius, radius um, fillets on ISOs are kind of difficult. But they look like they're 3D. But they're good. I mean, if you, if you, if you like to draw isometrics, and I do, then um, maybe that might be more of your forte. I'm not saying you can't, but we haven't gotten into oblique dimensioning. We haven't gotten into oblique dimensioning in this. We just have to, uh, we'll have to hold on that. Because the 2D details do play an aspect of this. You can create a detail library in 2Ds and still bring it onto a sheet. It doesn't have to be 3D. It doesn't have to be a representation of a 3D model. It displays a 2D uh, extraction or depiction. You could create a 2D drawing as a detail. Just like we did when we uh, used the um, the installation tool, if you remember, the uh, embellishments from the architectural tutorial, if you recall, how we embellished the 3D model with the 2D elements, bolts, nuts, the anchor bolts that go in on the sill plates into the footings and all that. It doesn't necessarily have to be a 3D, but I'll be honest with you, everyone's getting with it. They're like, well, you know what? F it. We sell bolts. Let's just make 3D bolts. I mean, they're coming out of a CNC machine. They're going to a CNC, a CNC machine anyway. You got to input this data into it to, to make the machine spit it out in the first place. Then why not just send the bolt back out to the, the dudes or the chicks in the field and use this as a 3D model? And then, and then embellish it in 3D. You know, you have to be able to find all of those uh, components. And a lot of these manufacturers, they, you know, takes effort to draw that. They have to staff a, a BIM modeler. You know, they don't want to just cough it up. Like, I don't remember ever getting a 3D switch gear from, uh, you know, <laughs> from a from a switch gear manufacturer, I always got just the paper. I never got the model, and they were all detailed. I wanted all the terminals. I wanted all of the switches. I wanted all of it. But no, 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 no. I wouldn't get it. I get the two D representation, and I'd have to sit there, and I'd have to sit there and bust my balls to get it onto paper. And then boom, you know, I'm sitting there, and I'm I'm left in the lurch. But don't think for a second that I'm not cognizant of the fact that you MFers hold it back and make you beg for it. Now, let's see here. Anyway, I'm not going to start dropping company names. All right, so um, let's just continue on. So we got this uh, unlocked 3D view, then we have show crop region and crop view, show rendering dialogue, and we went through this before, and this is where, you know, I love to do, you know me, I like to draw the pretty girls on the Fredericks of Hollywood posters and put them on the side of uh, really tall buildings to accentuate the beauty of architecture and MVP systems in general. That's just something I like to do. Anyway, sometimes, like in, you know, if you don't, sometimes this defaults to um, jump up where you can't move the, uh, the dialog box that opens. So sometimes you have to, you know, hide it, you know? So um, I'm going to have to take my task bar now and I'm gonna have to auto hide it. Uh, and then you gotta think about it for a while and say, well, why isn't the auto hide button on the right mouse click? 
And you say, well, why won't fucking Anko let me upgrade to Windows Edge? And then you say, okay, okay, I'll be patient. And you go, okay, well, where's the auto hide again? And I'm gonna have to now sit here and say, okay, well, I can't drag this fucking thing down. That's a pain in the balls. Maybe I can do it over here. Come over here and hide render the dialog box and do it like that. Because up here is where you would have to grab the dialog box, drag it down to close it. And then over here, you would have to right now click to auto hide the taskbar, which is now missing from the pull down menu. You see? It wants you to look for shit. You're going to browse, you're going to window shop here whether you like it or not. That's the thing about Windows. You're going to window shop here. Even if you have no money. You're going to window shop. You're going to window shop. And that's just the way it is. I, I'm big on that. I like to go and I window shop all the time. But not some chicks. Uh-uh. Some chicks, no, no, no. It's going in the cart and it's coming home. They can't. They can't stop. Like some women, they, they have to shop or they'll go fucking ballistic. They'll hurt somebody. <laughs> they will. If they can't go to, uh, you know, the mall of America, they'll hurt somebody. And shoes, what is it? It's girls' shoes. Thousands and thousands of pairs of fucking shoes. Oh. Anyway. This is MVP Systems. I'm not reinventing the wheel. I'm just trying to teach you and put it in terms you can understand. What do you think this is all about? Off 13 installation on a roof? <sighs> or some you know, lack of it on a tube? What do you think this is all about guys? That's the thing about construction. They think it's like women don't belong in it. And they'll show them this pig. That's why I'm tend some mock-ups in the field. You know. Nothing more attractive than an intelligent woman. Anyway, they're not auto, they're not all plastic fucked out autobots, I don't think. I don't think. I think some of my cognizant of, you know, blow on. I think some people, some men think that they're automated plastic fuck dolls for their uh, use. Material, you treat, or what do they say? You treat women like objects. But where's the pants in your relationship? All right, so, yeah, where are we going with this? Where's Michael going with this? We're going over here. Um, it's not showing the tooltip. Oh, that's because this now is open. So let's close that. Come over here. Let's come back to where we were. Hide rendering dialog box. Shadows off. Sun path off. Visual styles. And as you can see, this pop back on again. It wants me to just give you a little demo. This came back on again. But that kind of gives you a little more of an understanding. Now, here where, this is where, I mean, you can, you can throw the sun on in an MVP model, but you're not really going to get into display because the architectural model is not reporting back its material absorption or reflection, uh, reflectance and illuminance and all those parameters that we discussed earlier in the architectural. So if you're looking for that rendered appearance, uh, appearance, you're not going to get it. Unless, of course, your MVP, your MVP materials uh, have been applied, and, and there are lots of those as well. And if you want to see... Let's say a plant design where you have bronze and, and, and gold and, and magne uh, magnesium in these coatings. Like let's say Amaron, you look for Amaron coatings in Edison. And you have um, all sorts of different uh, enamoring material, materials that you're going to apply as a, as a surface to protect, let's say, a certain thing from being weathered uh, in an indoor or outdoor environment. Then you will see it render. And if you do turn on certain lighting schemes, it'll reflect, and you will see um, that. But again, I don't know if that's really the the, uh, the depth at which we're going to go into this course. Unless, of course, I get a gig yet at IMTT, 
But I, I'll be honest with you. If I was to work down IMTT, the only thing I can offer them is this. That's about it. I, where do you want the fucking posts? That's about it. You know, I'll upload to the cloud. That's about all I can tell you. Give me a site plan and I'll just place a manual point. That's the only thing I can offer. I'm not really interested in you know, drawing pipe. But I can make, I can just, you know, illustrate the point. You know, man. So, yeah, this works really good with the, with the tremble <laughs> thing. It's like the satellite. This works really good with uh, satellite wafer candy. Have you ever seen the satellite wafer candy? I used to get as a kid, you, it was like a hose from the church, and you shook it, and there was a little nonpareils in there, there was a little colored nonpareils. Anyway, this works great with those. All you need is a couple of those, pop in your mouth, Put this on a tablet, walk around the field, and that's it. Hit that button, and then you're good to go. It's a real tit job, to be honest with you. It's a tit. This is for the fucking birds. This is for the birds. But this is, at least this will get you out of the fucking house at least. Anyway, uh, yeah. But some motherfuckers, profess that oh this doesn't work with this and so yeah fuck that Jose Blanco over that guy fucking punch him in his fucking mouth another one a little fucking sissy Ooh, I don't like that little fuck and he's that Lear McGovern bovis faggot I don't like him at all man I don't like him Ooh, I don't like him he's one of those kids that just rubbed me the wrong fucking way you know rub me the wrong fucking way you know, oh, very clicky. And he's this, what is it, a fucking this, that's why, that's why, you know, he's this fucking big, trying to hide behind the fucking Department of Defense, and, and, and you know, he has to, <laughs> he's gonna need to, because I just don't fucking like him. Mark Blanc, what family fucking fortune is his fucking nest egg hidden in? When I met him at that coordination meeting with fucking those other two idiots from fucking Dow and that Eddie with the fucking West Coast Ed in for fucking AutoCAD, I swear to God, ask Abe, I swear to you, as God is my witness, I should have the patience of a saint with all you motherfuckers. The patience of a saint. And then you have the audacity to, 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 to let Mario Batali fucking run rampant and, and defraud the IRS. And I gotta sit back and be fucking a nice guy. You know, I bust my ass and sit there and take all that horse shit from you motherfucking bullshit artists and just steal the taxpayer's dollar and hide behind it? Uh-uh, not on my watch. Fuck you. You don't hear that? You don't hear about that in the news anymore, right? So let's, well, let's just settle out of court, hush that up, move on to the next fucking project. I didn't forget. Where's, where's my tips for waiting? Assholes. And then you give me that piece of shit fucking computer from Staples. You know, thanks a lot. You know, what a bunch of fucking assholes. You're lucky is what you are. That's the only thing you are. You're lucky. And, and you bank on that. You bank on the fact that guys like me are going to knock you the fuck out and you're going to lock me up. And, and you banked wrong because I didn't, I wouldn't, but I want to let you know that if nobody, if the referee wasn't looking, guess what? I'll bust your fucking jaw. That Jose Blanco, I hit him in the face. I'll kill him with one punch. He's that small. I'll fucking put him in a coma with it. And the way he was trying to push my fucking buttons, trying to push me into a fucking mental institution, he's lucky I didn't push him into a fucking life support system. Anyway, risk factor negative two. Well, it should be my neighbor. Reveal constraints. I said, this is going long. The temporary view probably settings applied to a view that shows the analytical model button and allows you to toggle the visibility of the analytical model. It's a structural feature. You know, he's structurally fragile. And he's lucky. <laughs> anyway, displacement sets can be highlighted. And, and don't, don't do that. 
don't highlight displacement sets, you know, or they'll get perturbed.